Thanks for sticking with us here on uh, KXAN News at 4. A $23 million federal grant plus $6 million more from a voter-approved mobility bond means nearly $29 million of improvements to make Austin streets safer for all users. KXAN's traffic anchor Erica Brenna sat down with the city to learn more about where this money will be used. Joel Meyer joining me right now. He is with Vision Zero program with the city's transportation department. So Joel, tell me about safe streets and this funding, what it means. Give me all of the information about it. The straight, safe streets and roads for all uh, grant program was uh, enabled by the federal uh, bipartisan infrastructure bill. Um, and it's really an unprecedented investment in improving transportation safety on our nation's roads. And so it's $5 billion over the next five years um, available to cities and states and communities across the country. And so Austin uh, learned that we uh, received around $23 million uh, last week for our application for Safe Streets and Roads for All. And um, we're really excited to get that extra funding to kind of continue the work we're already doing to improve the safety of our streets here in Austin, but also do some new things that we haven't been able to do before. There's some new things that you guys have your eye on. Yeah, so, you know, a lot of the work we do now is really uh, focused on some of the top crash intersections in, in Austin. We, we've done a lot of work where we've uh, used bond funding through the last few bond cycles to make improvements at some of our major intersections. And we've seen some really great results there, uh, seeing like 30% reduction in serious injury and fatal crashes at the at those locations. So some of the funding that we received through this grant is going to go towards things like that. But it's also going to allow us to do uh, things that are more systemic. So things that are looking at lower cost treatments, like lighting or improving ADA curb ramps or doing signal improvements at dozens of locations throughout the city. But we're also going to be looking to do new things like a citywide lighting study. So we know that uh, the vast majority of our fatal crashes are happening at night and in dark conditions. So we really wanted to make sure that we had a holistic strategy for improving street lighting throughout the city in conjunction with Austin Energy. What a time to be um, conducting a lighting study. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, we, we know there's we know there's a lot of challenges Austin Energy is facing right now. And so, you know, we're going to be working over the next few months to kind of really um, develop a scope for what that lighting study would look like and make sure that um, all of our partners are all on, on board and in alignment with that. But yeah, we know there's there's some challenges right now. There's some gaps in our lighting system and there's certain locations that just just don't have lighting for whatever reason. And so, you know, we want to make sure that we're really understanding where those opportunities are and really have a, a kind of sustainable strategy going forward, both from, you know, a prioritization standpoint, but also a funding standpoint and making sure all the different city departments that touch street lighting are all on the same page. And then there's some other things using technology. So uh, we, we have about a million dollars carved out for video analytics, uh, basically being able to look at dozens of locations throughout the city, uh, recording video at those locations and using some advanced uh, software with some of our technology partners to diagnose some of the safety issues that we're seeing out there. Exact locations have not been released just yet by the city. However, on their grant application, they designated some areas deemed underserved to examine. Those include roads like Cameron Road around Runberg Lane and Breaker Lane, Montopolis Drive around Burleson and Stosny Lane, among many more. To see that map, head over to our website, kxan.com, and click on to Erica's story.